What's up folks, how's it going? This is Wanj from MW Technology and today I'm going to talk about a type of content we haven't covered before on the channel, and that is EVs. Now, for more than a decade, we've been specifically driving the Toyota Prius from the second generation, third generation, all the way up uh, to the fourth generation plug-in Prius Prime. And we've had a lot of fun with those cars, ultra efficient if you want reliable transportation. I still don't think there's a better uh, hybrid or plug-in hybrid vehicle out there right now. Uh, but I knew eventually down the road that a all electric vehicle would be something that we're very interested in. And uh, which one was pretty darn obvious since we wouldn't have this mass EV adoption and this whole revolution happening in the auto world right now without one company, and that's obviously Tesla. So we actually picked up a uh, 2023 Model Y rear wheel drive as well as a Model 3 standard range that I'm sitting in right now to do all of our testing for this bold new world of EV adoption, as well as being our daily transportation uh, go-to uh, vehicles. Now, there's a lot of amazing technology, no doubt, environmentally friendly, arguably as well. But if you're going to criticize anything that people criticize the Model 3 and Y for is that the interiors are super basic and minimalistic. Now, I personally enjoy the minimalism that we see over here. I think uh, no matter how crazy the extraneous world is outside in here, you're free from any extraneous distractions, overly designed fit and finish trim pieces and uh, overly complicated buttons. And in combination with the large 15 inch display, scroll wheels and steering stocks, you can pretty much do anything you would want in this car without having to read a manual. This is one of the brilliant things about uh, this uh, infrastructure that we have over here. But if you're going to gripe on anything, it has to be that the fact that you don't have a instrument cluster in front of the driver. And the lack of an instrument cluster is definitely a cost cutting measure uh, in order to make this car more profitable because we do have them on the S and X. Now, thankfully, there are a lot of aftermarket companies that supply uh, these secondary displays, anywhere from small little displays that fit in between the air vents, medium sized one, all the way up to full size dashboard replacement that emulate the look that you find on the SNX. Now, I've chosen two specific secondary uh, instrument cluster displays from Pimp My EV that offer, I think, the best overall value and the feature sets while still maintaining the aesthetic look of the minimalistic interior that we find in here. And uh, the key things about these displays is one, they don't. Uh, kind of obstruct the air vent that's right in front of you too much, although the smaller, the better that you're going to find. Uh, second is that everything you're going to do from an installation perspective is reversible. There's no drilling. There's no destruction of your existing interior, which is important. So we're going to go through the installation process, and then we're going to talk about the experience on using these displays. Now, the install process is exactly the same on both the Model 3 and Y. The only thing you really have to know is whether you're running an Intel processor or an AMD processor. Typically speaking, models 2021 and older are going to use the Intel Atom-based processor, and uh, 22 and newer vehicles are most likely running the latest AMD Ryzen processor. You can find out for sure by going to your vehicle control settings, software, additional vehicle information, and there you'll find what processor you have. Now, each display comes with its own wiring harness, which is very clearly labeled. And as you can see on one side of the wiring harness, we have an eight pin connection that connects directly into the secondary display. On the other side, we have a two way split. One is a set of connectors for AMD cars and another is a set of connectors for Intel-based cars. Now, if you take a look at the Intel-based uh, connections, you can see that we have this large white CAN bus male and female connection. This actually taps into the computer located behind the passenger glove box area, which is a little bit tricky to get to, but we'll show you a good way to get to it as easily as possible. The AMD uh, set of connectors is a little bit more easier to install since it's just located by the right side a pillar by the footwell and it's basically a blue can bus connection for data and a white power connection that we tap into right next to that connector we'll show you where all the locations are in a little bit now you don't really need any special tools for this job i would recommend getting a 
set of trim removal tools since you don't want to damage anything on your cars and something like this is super affordable if you don't have one we'll have links in the description down below the first step is to remove the small driver's side trim piece facing the door you can easily pry it out using the trim removal tool and once you have that done you can go to the passenger side and do the exact same thing on the mirroring trim piece it can simply be pried out and once you have both pieces out you now are free to take out the center wood dash console piece of the Tesla. It simply just pulls right up and out. It doesn't take too much force and it's super easy to take out. Next, on the passenger side, by the A-pillar, there's a small plastic trim piece in between the dash and the door. You could simply take it out by hand. And once you have that done, we now have to have access to the glove box. Since our car specifically is an Intel car, we're going to have to connect using the hard method with the Intel connections. So what we have to do is basically you're going to need a light to light up the underside of that area since things are going to be dark. And underneath the glove box, you're going to see a bottom panel and we're going to need to remove that panel by taking out four plastic push fastener rivet clips. Now most trim removal sets have some sort of tool that can help you pry open these push fastener clips so you can easily free them out with a little bit of patience and not too much force because they can break. Uh, but once you have all four clips out of there, the uh, bottom panel will come out and you can see that there's two wires connecting a light as well as a speaker. You basically want to push down on the release tabs of the wires connecting the light and the speaker and those wires should come free. Next, since we're going to be disconnecting some plugs from the computer, it's probably a good idea to power down the car. You want to go into your car uh, menu, control settings, go into safety, scroll all the way down to power off. Now what we need to do is get access uh, to the Intel plug located at the back of the computer behind the glove box. So the best way to access this and reach that connection, which is quite deep inside, you actually want to uh, put the seat uh, kind of back and you want to recline uh, the passenger seat all the way uh, down so that way you can in the reverse position be facing up and towards the back of the glove box area with the light pointed in the right direction you could see that we're looking at uh, this computer module over here and on uh, the right hand side we have a whole bunch of uh, connectors and in the middle we see a great connection that's going to be the one that we gonna need to take out and uh, basically uh, put in our male CAN bus connection that's labeled Intel on our wiring harness. And we have a female connection that we're gonna reconnect the uh, gray plug that we just connected out into that female connection. So that way we have continuity and we've tapped into the computer, which is going to feed us both data and power. Now, the tricky bit is if you can't get the uh, actual plug out of the computer itself uh, you could use a flathead screwdriver to poke into the release tab and then use that screwdriver as leverage to take out that connection this is probably the hardest part of this entire intel process so uh, take your time be patient and you eventually get it now at the end of it you should have something like this you have a white wiring harness CAN bus connection coming from your secondary display into the computer and then you have a female wiring harness connection that's connected into the original gray connection that we just took out. You can just tuck the wires into place and that's pretty much covered for the Intel side. Now, if you have a newer car running an AMD processor, you don't need access to this area. You simply uh, need to connect it to uh, plugs that are located underneath the footwell slash door trim piece. Uh, basically, you're gonna remove uh, this top plastic fastener and then pull out this trim piece over here. And then here by the A-pillar, you can see that we have an unoccupied blue CAN bus connection, which is gonna provide us with data as well as right on top of it a power connection that is connected but we can simply tap into that power using the female connection and then plug in the male end of the wiring harness to that so we have everything covered for amd cars 
Once you have your connections in place, we're going to feed the wiring harness back on top of the dash area towards the steering column and we're going to put on our foot on our brake to power up the car so we can then telescope the steering wheel all the way in its extended position towards the driver so we have a long extended steering column and what we're going to need to do is now take out the uh, top steering column cover both the hard plastic and the vinyl cowl at the back. To take out the vinyl cowl, we have some plastic push fasteners at the back that we're going to wedge into and pull out uh, pretty simple and straightforward there. But to take out uh, the uh, top cover, the hard plastic on the steering column, we're gonna need to pry in between the two bottom and top pieces. And with a little bit of force and a lot of care, we are going to eventually pry open the top of the cover. It might take a little bit of time, but be patient and apply even force throughout the entire section of the cover and you will free it eventually. Now, once you have this upper steering column cover taken out completely, we're gonna swap out the back vinyl cowl and uh, transpose it onto the new secondary display that has its built-in steering column cover. Now to remove the back cowl, we want to simply compress these compression clips over here using a pair of needle nose pliers. You don't want to add too much force because they can break on you, so just be careful. And then we want to transpose them and install them in the exact way that we took them out onto the casing that holds the secondary display. Once you're done that, we're back in the car and we're going to connect our secondary display to the 8-pin wiring harness and uh, the other little small connector doesn't really do anything so you just want to kind of tuck it out of the way. You can then line up the display casing so it matches the steering column mounting points and then apply even pressure throughout the casing itself and it will eventually snap into place. After that, you can feed the cable through the back of the cowl, uh, install the cowl back in using the uh, existing clips, and now it's just a case of uh, taping everything down onto the upper portion of the dashboard where it doesn't impede on the ventilation system airflow. So that's typically kind of in the middle in the lower portion and uh, the ventilation system is usually at the top so you don't want to block anything there. But once you have your cable management done right and you're happy with uh, your work there, you can pretty much install your trim pieces in the appropriate fashion the way you kind of took them out and they simply uh, just go back in exactly how they came out with just some pressure clips and you're pretty much ready to rock and roll. Now the interface on both displays are slightly different. You can change the overall look and display settings by holding down the right side of the right scroll wheel, uh, which typically changes your following distance on your adaptive cruise control. But uh, when you do so, you get into the menu systems of the displays themselves. Now starting with the smaller three and a half inch display, you can change things like temperature temperatures from Celsius to Fahrenheit, you can change the time zones, the themes dark, bright and auto, as well as change tire pressure sensors from PSI display to bars. You could change the metrics from kilometers to miles, language as well as time formats 12 to 24 and uh, lastly you can change the ui to uh, ui1 which basically just gives you all the information including your tire pressure settings on each individual tires and ui2 is basically a simpler version of that where you don't have that information now with a 5.5 inch display, there's a couple of more features. Most notably, you can actually customize the type of vehicle display from a Model 3 to a Y. You can change the colors from the factory colors from Tesla, including blue, red, black, white, and gray. You have three wheel options, the standard 18 inch, 19 inch, and 20 performance respectively. You can change the theme to dark white auto, tire pressure monitors in PSI or bars displayed. You also have two UIs to choose from. One is a classic digital display and one is an analog style display. Now I've been using both of these displays for the past couple of months and I have to say that the experience has been definitely game changing. If you're a Tesla driver, you have everything you need directly in your line of sight. And in the drive modes, you're getting the current speeds with no delays whatsoever, since everything is being captured directly through the CAN bus from the car's 
data computer. So if you're worried about inaccurate information, any kind of lag or response time issues, that is not the case with both of these displays. You're getting all the correct information about everything displayed right in front of you. Some of the other things that I like and that you're gonna see on the displays is obviously your speed limit, of the road that you're driving in. You're gonna see your gear selection, whether you're in drive, reverse, neutral, or park. You're gonna see turn signals, which is a nice thing, as well as outside temperature, the time of day, cruise control, following distance, as well as tire pressure, monitor, and my favorite thing is the fact that you can see the estimated range and your battery percentage at the same time, something that's not available on the factory Tesla Center display. Now, one of the questions that you may have is what do I personally prefer, the three and a half inch or the 5.5 inch? Well, if you're looking for the better display, it definitely the 5.5 inch. It's brighter, definitely higher resolution, has a greater fidelity, and with the animations that's built in with the car that you're driving, it definitely integrates better into the Tesla ecosystem and is the more pleasant visual experience, especially if you want a larger display with all of that uh, cool information displayed in front of you, similar to what you get with the Model S and X. Now, given all those advantages, I still personally prefer the three and a half inch uh, display. For me, it's perfect from a utilitary perspective. It gives you pretty much all the information that you get on the larger 5.5 inch display. But I think uh, the uh, form factor and the smaller size definitely blends in uh, to the existing minimalistic interior that we see on the 3 and Y a little bit better. And if you're still trying to maintain that ultra minimalistic feel, but yet get the functionality of a secondary display, I think the three and a half inch is probably my go to even though you can't change the car that's being displayed on the screen and it's not as uh, large and as visible as the 5.5 inch and from a ventilation standpoint I think it does impede airflow a little bit less than the 5.5 inch and is probably uh, the best size if you want to minimize any sort of obstruction with the ventilation system the 5.5 inch although relatively smaller than other aftermarket solutions does slightly impede the airflow so if you want hot or cold air directly blown on to your face without any obstructions you might have some issues with that size and i would recommend something smaller accordingly but really on that guys that's really it. i'm super fortunate to have this opportunity to own these cars and to share my experience with them with you guys and i would definitely love to know what you guys think of uh, this whole new world of uh, electric vehicles. Do you think they're worth it compared to internal combustion engine vehicles, uh, compared to hybrids, plug-in hybrids? Are you interested in cars in general? Definitely love to know what you guys think. If you're interested in getting uh, these uh, displays for your Tesla, uh, check out the description down below. Big thanks to PimpMyEV.com for supplying these review units. We'll probably have a discount code in the description down below if you want a little bit of a deal. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel, have post notifications turned on. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching, for your support, and we'll see you real soon in the next one. Take care.